Good day everyone. By the way, I'm Amor Diaz and with my colleagues. So today we are going to discuss about possible subsumption theory and instructional design models and theories, which is the subsumption theory. So before we start, let us talk or let us know who is David Paul Osabel. So, David Paul Osabel was born on October 25, 1918. He's taking a bachelor's degree in psychology at University of Pennsylvania in 1939. He graduated from medical school at Middlesex University in 1949. And he's also a PhD degree in development psychology at, in, at Columbia University in 1950. In the same year, he received the Thorndike Award from the American Psychological Association for a distinguished psychological contribution to education. Died on July 9, 2008. Before we are going to continue our discussion, I want you to analyze first or for you to have an idea about our discussion. Here's the summary. A summary about the subsection theory. So, the subsection theory was developed in 1963 by the American psychologist David Osabel. The theory is concerned with how people acquire and learn huge amounts of information through visual or textual ways. In this summary, I hope you have an idea or you analyzed. So for further discussion, I want you to, or I want to introduce to you Mr. Marco Vianda Lisay to continue the discussion. The quintessential of subsumption theory. The subsumption theory was designed specifically for instructional design, unlike many other instructional theories which are psychology-based models applied to instructional design. So, subsumption theory was originally developed exclusively for instructional design. It specifies a method for developing educational materials that are aids learners in organizing their content in order to make it transferable. So, in instructional design, it prescribes a way of creating instructional materials that help learners organize their content in order to make it meaningful for, to, for transfer. The goal here is for learners to have the necessary background that will help them solve any problem and also retain this knowledge. The acquisition of knowledge, according to Osable's theory, is based on the real processes that occur during learning. So, according to Osable's theory, this acquisition of knowledge is based on an actual process that occurs during learning of the learners. Subsumption is a critical process that occurs in the learner's brain, in which new knowledge is unverbatim connected to ideas that are already presented in the existing cognitive structure. So, the key process that takes place in the learner's brain is subsumption, wherein new content is related to relative ideas that are already present in the existing cognitive structure on a verbatim basis. After forgetting a core, cognitive structure are what's left in the human brain from all of the learning experiences. As a result, when particular details, facts, or events lose their uniqueness, they are incorporated into a larger concept. So, when some details, facts, or situations lost their individual nature, they are then integrated into a general motion. And now, let's proceed to my topic, which is the two main types of a subsumption. So, what are those two types of subsumption? So, there are two types, which is the derivative subsumption and the correlative subsumption. So first, let's tackle what is derivative subsumption. When we say derivative subsumption, it describes 
the situation in which the new information you learn is just an example of an information that you have learned already. Example, you see a new kind of bird um, that has a big body, that has a long strong leg. It can't fly but it can run so fast. So in order for you to accommodate this new concept or the new idea of a bird, so in order for you to accommodate this new information or concept, you have to change or expand your idea about the bird. And now you are going to include the concept of an ostrich to your old concept of what bird is. Okay, so what is correlative subsumption? When we say correlative subsumption, it means you are going to add a new concept of an idea. You are going to expand your previous idea. You are going to elaborate. Example, you've seen a new kind of bird, which is an ostrich. And you've already knew that ostrich can't fly, but it has a big body, it has a long, strong legs, but it can run so fast. To accommodate this new information, you need to include the concept of an ostrich to your previous learning about the concept of a bird. So therefore, you expand your idea about the bird. You are expanding, you are adding new idea to your concept of bird. That You are including the possibility of bird being big and having a long strong legs. Today, I will be discussing about the 4K principles of subsumption theory. As we all know, the subsumption theory focuses on how individuals acquire and learn large chunks of information through visual means or text materials. Subsumption theory has four key principles. The first one is learners should be presented with the most general concept first and then their analysis. This means that an instructor should provide and present first the general concepts of a certain topic so that the learners may be able to have a background of the concept and able to provide their analysis. For example, the instructor provides any learning materials like handouts or visual aids to the learners for them to study and acquire learnings of the topic. The second principle is the instructional materials should include new as well as previously acquired information. Comparisons between new and old concepts are crucial. This means that the instructional materials provided must include new information as well as already acquired information. It is because there is a comparison between new and old concepts that we must consider so that we can provide accurate information of the concept. Therefore, previ previously acquired information is still important even if we have already a new one, we just need to upgrade our instructional materials and provide it to the learners. The third principle is existing cognitive structures should not be developed but merely reorganized within the learner's memory. By the way, cognitive structures provides meaning and organization to experiences and guides both the processing of new information and the retrieval of stored information. This means that the existing cognitive structures must be reorganized within the learner's memory because it will help them solve any problem in the future. And the last principle is the role of the instructor is to bridge the gap between what's already known and what is about to be learned. Um, this means that the instructor should be able to Identify the concepts already known by the learners and the concepts that is about to be learned. It is because instructors are the one who provide the learners needed additional information of a certain concept for them to be 
able to understand it well and gain learnings from it. And that is all my report. Good morning everyone. This is the four types of advanced organizer. When you hear the word four types advanced organizer, what comes into your mind? Okay, so let's proceed. Advanced organizer that should always be given prior instruction can be divided into the following four types. And these are the following four types. Exposition. Expository organizer, narrative organizer, scheming organizer, and graphic organizer. And these are the four types of organizer. Expository organizer that, that provides a description of a new knowledge. For example, a teacher might be explaining the lessons objectives to students. We've talked about habitats and why certain animals prefer to do well in different places than others. Okay, next, narrative organizer that present the new information in the story format. The meaning is the organizer focuses on the sensory details and requires the student to visualize each scene of their, sto their, their story by drawing drawing it out, and they listening as many sensory aspects as they can think of. And next is scheming organizer. Scheming organizer, when the teacher allows the students to scheme here a new information that is about to be presented and they can concentrate on the highlighted information. And next, this is this is a graphic organizer that, in, that include pictographs, descriptive or conceptual patterns, and can concept maps. And these are the meaning. Are used as a method of presenting information in a visual form. And they are efficient because they are, they are highlight and focus and focus and just the, just the important aspect and they also show relationship between necessary information. Graphic organizer Take on, a, take on a scene and look. But the two most utilized are Venn diagram and concept mapping. Here is an example of Venn diagram used to show relationship.